Hello everyone, I'm Sybil Starr and I'm here today to give the astrology forecast for the upcoming Capricorn full moon that occurs on June 21st at one degree seven minutes at 6.08 p.m. Pacific time. Now, I do want to share that we're going to have two full moons in Capricorn this year. We have one on June 21st at one degree, but there is a second one that is on July 21st at 29 degrees of Capricorn. So this is a very strong energy for us right now, Capricorn, but so is Cancer, the opposite sign. And we know the moon has no light of her own, so we always uh, have the axis of the two signs because the moon reflects the light of the sun. So in this case, it is the Cancer Capricorn axis. And so um, we and we are very much in the energy of the summer solstice. This this um, the full moon on June 21st occurs the day after the summer solstice, which the sun is at its peak. And here in the northern hemisphere, it is at zero degrees cancer. Uh, it is the time of the year in the northern hemisphere where um, the weather is mild. There's uh, the the land is lush with food and it's the great mother taking care of us. Now in the, the Southern hemisphere, it is reversed, but the, at the summer solstice, the sun is stands still for three days. It doesn't change its position in the sky. And um, then after that, the sun's, the light of the sun starts to wane. It has been building and at, then it will start waning and then be reborn again at the winter solstice, which is at zero degrees of Capricorn. So anyway, the, but the energy of Capricorn is really strong right now. It's the archetype of the elder, uh, which can be, we can look at as the grandmother or the grandfather. Uh, Capricorn has to do with self-mastery, mastery of the ego wisdom gained through living and integrity and inner strength. Now I'm going to share the chart of the um, Capricorn full moon. Okay. So here it is. All right. So what we have here, like I said, uh, the full moon is at June 21st, 2024, 6.08 PM Pacific time. And um, the moon is here at one degree, seven minutes of Capricorn. And it, it's opposite the sun at one degree, seven minutes of Cancer. Okay, so that opposition now is also involved in a grand cross. And so these two, uh, the sun and the moon are in a square with Neptune. It's an out of sign square at 29 degrees, of, of 54 minutes of Pisces. And it's actually opposite. You can't see it here because my chart doesn't show it, but it's called the supergalactic center, which is at two degrees of Libra. And it, this is very significant. And so I'll be talking about what that actually means. Okay. And we go back here again and we have the sun is conjunct Venus, widely conjunct Mercury. And it is also a quincunx, which is 150 degrees or in conjunct. They, they're two words that describe the same aspect with Pluto. And a quincunx or an in conjunct is, um, is it, it, it's often a healing aspect, but it's always something too. It's kind of like the way they describe it, it. It's it's not like a square, which is just like really challenging and very compulsive and really makes you deal with it. This is more of an inability to um, get along. Um, what is the right word for that? Um, Anyways, they say it's kind of, it's described like a pebble in your shoe. It's just kind of annoying. It's there. So, and yet it's something that needs to be dealt with. It's two elements here. We've got air and water who don't really mix all that well. And yet they're being asked to work together. They're both at one degree. So it's really significant. Okay. All right. Now let us continue with the rest of the chart reading. So anyway, 
So as I said, this full, and, and it's how important to remember that the full moon is actually shows us the fulfillment or the culmination of the new moon. And we know we had the new moon in Gemini, which was so much about the magic of our words and how we use our words and language um, to create. So what are we creating in our world? So this is the, like I said, the culmination of it. And as we go through it, there'll be some pieces that, that show us what that's about. So the uh, Cancer Capricorn axis is known as the parental axis. Cancer is about the unconditional love of the mother. And we're being asked to integrate it with Capricorn, the the, the Capricorn, which is about the wisdom of living in integrity, responsibility, and self-discipline of the father. You know, I always use that um, um, analogy that, you know, a mother goes to court with her son and says, you know, I know he's committed crimes, but I love him because he's mine. Whereas the love of the father is more like you're 21, get out and get a job, learn to take, stand on your own two feet. So they're both two different ways of showing love. Okay. So it's about the balancing of emotional control with vulnerability and deep feeling. The Capricorn moon asks for emotional maturity to own our feelings and to real to remember no one actually makes you feel a certain way that emotion lives within you it gets triggered and when it gets triggered there's a trauma there's something there that wants to come to the surface and so it's important to own your feelings and say what you know if if you feel like you've gotten triggered by someone um what is it about okay all right and Saturn and Capricorn both represent our ego and conditioning um, of our of, of our culture, of our family, of our ancestry. But it's also about our ego. The shadow of uh, of Capricorn and and Saturn both is the illusion of separation from source. And so it can bring up fear and insecurities around not feeling good enough. And it's really important to know this is this is part of the conditioning of our culture, the part of the patriarchal paradigm. I like to relate it to original sin. It's how we come into this world. We're, we're told that we're not good enough. And so it's how to heal that is healing this on a personal and collective level. Capricorn has a strong inner judge, and it's important to realize that we are the ones setting that bar really high for ourselves. Capricorn, especially a Capricorn moon, when the moon is in Capricorn, the moon is very sensitive. And Capricorn uh, can be a strong inner judge and be very hard on ourselves when we feel we don't measure up. And it seems as though the judgment is coming from others, but the truth is, it's really coming from ourselves. Capricorn really pushes us to excel because, and to really look at those places where we might be out of alignment with our inner truth. And that is what integrity is, is really is. It's about being in alignment with our own inner truth. Um, the Capricorn journey is of self-mastery or mastery of the ego, living in alignment with one's inner truth and integrity. And when you think of it, you think of a life well lived and the accomplishments of the soul, whether on an inner or an outer level. Sometimes our accomplishments are meant to be in the outer world, but sometimes a big portions of our life is about the accomplishment of our inner growth, how we grow and mature. Okay. All right, Capricorn is the symbol of the mountain goat. Um, and, and so you can often think of Capricorn as climbing a mountain that we need to have focus, we need to pay attention, but it's really important to see how far we have come. Um, we can look ahead and see how far we have to go, but it's also very important to look behind to see how far we have come and give ourselves a pat on the back um, and realize just how much hard work we have put into our lives. Now, the sun in cancer, cancer is, like I said, the mother. It's a much softer energy. It's about affairs of the heart. It's the love of the great mother. 
And this Cancer Sun is conjunct Venus, uh, which is uh, another uh, aspect of the Great Mother. And so this is a very sweet and loving aspect. And so I feel like what it is saying as this harder um, as we with the Capricorn moon, we're being pushed to our edges to kind of our growth edges. And but the and the Capricorn and the Cancer Sun conjunct Venus is saying to as we do this hard work to love ourselves, because cancer is so much about love and it starts with self love. And as we love ourselves, then it ripples out and changes our world. Cancer can often be the archetype of the mother who hides behind um, others because sometimes it's so much easier to get our needs to, excuse me, to, to fulfill the needs of others than to get our own needs met. And that may be also what this is about is being the emotional maturity of being able to say, yes, this is what I need and setting boundaries. Yes. Um, it's the, to me, it's this full moon is the archetype of the grandmother because many of us have had an elder woman in our life, whether it was a grandmother or an older woman from whom we have learned the great wisdom and great love. And they've learned, and the grandmother has learned to love deeply, even in the face of struggles that is so important to keep our hearts open and also knows this too shall pass whatever the challenge is. Just think of the qualities of a grandmother, love and wisdom combined. Okay. Mercury is also widely conjunct this uh, full moon. And of course, Mercury ruled the new moon in Gemini, which is so much about communication. And that's once again, it's saying it's about words of love. Mercury and Cancer conjunct Venus and the sun is about the impact of words of love have to heal and the ability to share wisdom with love. But most importantly, though, is how we speak to ourselves. It's every bit as important. I mean, more so, more important, really. And so be really aware to speak to yourself with the same kindness that you would speak to someone else. This full moon is also a very creative time, especially for writing and journaling, but really any form of creativity that helps us express uh, our feelings for healing and self-expression may come through. And many fiction writers have mercury and cancer. As they say, the stories are actually soul memories to allow your imagination to run wild. You don't know what might come into your awareness imagination and create creative visualization are a big part of the creative process. Okay. All right. So the Sabian symbol is really significant for this full moon. So the Sabian symbol for this full moon is, and those who don't know what the Sabian symbols are, um, there was a psychic named Elsie Wheeler back in the 1930s, I believe it was, who had a vision for every degree of the Zodiac. And she worked with this astrologer called Mark Edmund Jones. And often the, the image, um, so as they say, sometimes an image can say a thousand words. And sometimes the images are just really helpful to understand the energy. So the image for this Sabian symbol for this full moon is three stained glass windows in a Gothic church, one damaged by war. To me, what this really spoke to is many things, but what really uh, aligned with this full moon is, you know, the, um, Leonard Cohen song, you know, there is a crack in everything for that is where the light gets in. And Ruby said, the wound is where the light enters. And so, you know, Capricorn with the piece of the self-judgment um, shows us where our, that could be where our wound is, is around self-judgment, our old and old trauma of where we feel judged. And um, but any of our old, any wounds, um, old wounds and old traumas, um, that when they are exposed, we feel vulnerable. 
but is when we allow ourselves to feel vulnerable and let others see our wounds is when we allow ourselves to heal because that's when we feel most deeply. When we allow ourselves to feel the disappointments, the regrets, those places of sadness that we want to even hide from ourselves, when we allow ourselves to feel the pain, it will dissipate over time. And as it does, it will also allow us to feel greater joy, gratitude, and love as we let that light into the dark places of our hearts, the places where we don't yet love ourselves. That's what this is really about. As we let the light into those places where we don't yet love ourselves. And as they say, a broken heart is an open heart because that is where the light gets in and leads us to deep compassion for ourselves and others. Some say compassion is the highest form of love. And I've even heard some say they feel this is why we have incarnated is to have a broken heart. So as, because as our heart breaks, we, and the compassion that we feel, um, feels the compassion that we feel uh, spreads out into the universe and into our field. And it says, open your heart to love because love heals everything. Now, I talked about this grand cross with Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces and the supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra. I've talked about the supergalactic center before. Uh, it is a black hole or that's what we call, we call it a black hole. Our 3D physics call it a black hole. Our star nation relatives say it's actually a portal to other universes and other worlds. And the major teaching of this supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra is the law of attraction. And so what are you broadcasting? Because whatever you are broadcasting is what is coming back to you. The external world is a mirror reflection of our inner world and what we are putting out into the world from that. I have this beautiful quote from Lisa Royal Holt. She did a, a video where she channeled one of the Pleiadian beings that she works with named Hamon. And so this is the, the quote. You are as the one. You are holographic consciousness. Each of you in your human bodies are fractals of the whole, which basically means that the universe is a reflection of yourself. In a separated reality, humans don't understand this idea. So if they see something they don't like in another person, they might judge that other person, not realizing they're really throwing their judgment at a mirror because the one they are judging is really a part of themselves. She says it in such a wonderful way. A new vision of consciousness is evolving where we become aware there is no objective reality, but a version of consciousness based on your own perception. A, this is, it's once again, a reflective universe that is based on your perception and everyone has a different perception. And Neptune, opposite the supergalactic center, is showing us that all is not as it seems. Our version of consensus is real. Uh, our version of consensus reality is changing with Saturn in Pisces. Saturn represents consensus reality, and it is changing with its transit of Pisces, and then it moves on to a conjunction with Neptune in the last degrees of Pisces, and then into zero degrees Aries. This happens over 2025 and 2026. The exact conjunction of Saturn and uh, Neptune will be at zero degrees Aries on February 20th, 2026. <clears throat> and uh, this is the birth of a new reality as we realize um, this beautiful quote here from Robert Hand that I've shared in many of my videos, but it just seemed really significant again, that Saturn is the illusion. There is one reality. Neptune is the reality. There, there are many. Saturn is the illusion. There is one reality. Neptune is the reality. There are many. 
This comes from Robert Hand. And I, this is where we are going, that we are recognizing that our reality is based on our perception. And um, the universe mirrors that back to us. That's why people can have very different uh, perspectives. Now, also, the crack there are cracks in our 3D understanding of reality of separation. And that is where the light of higher consciousness is coming in, the light of creator. Neptune is at 29 degrees of Pisces, which is called the anoretic degree. It's the last degree. And the last degree, not only of Pisces, but of the Zodiac. When it moves into zero degrees Aries, it's a whole new beginning. And when it's the last degree, it's really kind of um, focusing in on the teaching of, 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 of let's, and in this case, it's of Neptune in Pisces. And it's about letting go of the illusion of separation and moving into unity consciousness. The Kogi of Colombia, South America, say that we are in the times when the end falls into the beginning, which is what Neptune is doing. It is the last degree of Pisces, but it is going to fall into the beginning of zero degrees Aries. And this time it will be at a different level of consciousness as we start to remember who we are. This new beginning, in this new beginning, we are traveling in the photon belt where we have not been for over 11,000 years. In the age of Aquarius is a time of remembering and it's a time of moving back into unity consciousness. And um, the light is pouring in. Now, this Neptune is conjunct the beautiful star Shayat uh, Pegasus. Um, and this star is a receiving station asking us to open our hearts to receive the massing, massive amounts of light pouring in. Neptune opens our heart to universal love and compassion. When we remember that we are all one and part of something greater than ourselves. Now, Saturn is the ruler of this Capricorn moon and is also in Pisces. Um, they are uh, Neptune Neptune in Pisces and Saturn in Pisces are 10 degrees apart. So it's a very wide conjunction. It will be a lot tighter next year. But Saturn is at 19 degrees of um, Pisces and Neptune at 29. So it's 10 degrees. It's a very wide, but like I said, they will move closer. And Saturn represents the structures of our lives. And Pisces and Neptune are both water. So, of course, once again, the uh, structure of water and the importance of drinking structured water and how that really uh, takes care of us in our bodies. It's much different in our bodies than, well, let's just say the denatured water, which goes through all the chemicals and things that in our water system. That's why it's so important to drink spring water. And, and there are technologies that say they also restructure the water. But where I want to go with this, though, is... Um, Saturn and Pisces also rule the immune system and the lymph system. And the lymph system is considered one of our water systems in our body. And Saturn here can show incoherence in our immune and lymph, lymph systems where we need to come back into alignment. When our lymph system is not working well, it diminishes the strength of the immune system and vice versa. When it is strong, when the lymph system is working well, then our immune system is strong. And we have been receiving upgrades through our 3D body template, and the lymph system is being upgraded into a waterway of liquid light. I study with a Arcturian hybrid named Vivian Chauvet, who is absolutely wonderful. And I took a class with her, which was so much about attuning um, our bodies and all of our energy feel into the new human template and activation of our light bodies and our 12 strand DNA. And she, one of her classes was about the lymph system. And she says that the lymph is about water, joy, and unity consciousness. She says to visualize your lymph nodes as anchors of light that transmutes old emotional imprints and trauma whether it be personal or collective. 
See it as a ship traveling these waterways and the nodes as ports where the old karmic blockages are released and transmuted by compassion into love, joy, and unity consciousness. The health of our lymph system and immune system is really strong right now. It's really important that we, because we are so many toxins and so many poisons in our world that we really have to have our lymph system vibrating at a higher level and that to to know that it is actually called liquid light all right uh the sun is in conjunct pluto in aquarius we talked about that and pluto transforms pluto is known as the great transformer and uh, we have talked before about you know the the vibe the uh the analogy that we are running like uh, a 110 um, voltage, but a 220 voltage is coming in and we need a transformer. Well, Pluto is at least one of, one of the primary transformers and Pluto transforms through forgiveness of self and other. It is so important, especially as we're working with Saturn and this moon in Capricorn to forgive ourselves to know that all is forgiven by the universe and now you must forgive yourself. And Pluto is also about trust, trust in the process, trust in our higher selves to know that we are never alone. Our higher selves have planned um, uh, this experience for us. And of course, you know, White Eagle says, the purpose of life is the evolution of the soul through experience. And Pluto says, evolve or die. But we must trust the process and know that we are always held in the arms of love. And that our evolution depends on the quality of our healing and our ability to release old stagnant energy patterns in our emotional bodies. The more healed we are, the more powerful we are, and the more powerful we are when we come together. Because the role of the collective consciousness in the quantum field, to me, Aquarius is very much about the collective consciousness and the and Pluto transiting through there is a transformation of the collective consciousness and how as how, when we come together in the quantum field to pray, to meditate, to focus our energies is really how we're going to change our world. It's going to create a tipping point. But if we haven't done our work, we will revert to the least common denominator, which is fear. But if we've done our work and released a lot of these old stagnant energies that are really not us, um, what needs to we what we need to release we come together in a very powerful way okay and that is actually what is going to create the tipping point i was i went to an event it was actually a stargate event and when the leader of this event was pragit many of you probably are familiar with the stargate um, experience out of Mount Shasta. And part of the meditation was visualizing the whole world of, uh, engulfed in compassion, compassion coming from our heart. And I could really feel the shift. And I know it is just super important that we start working together this way. All right. Now, Uranus is at Taurus, 25 degrees. And it's conjunct the fixed star Sagan in Pegasus. And this is an interesting star. I just found out about it because this star is said to open time portals. And those who have this degree in their chart may be time travelers. But anyway, as Uranus is transiting it, we might find ourselves either time traveling or opening other timelines. All right. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the fixed star Betelgeuse in Gemini. It's at 29 degrees, five minutes of Gemini, and it's an out of sign conjunction with the sun. It's two degrees in conjunction with our sun. Now, uh, I'm going to show you, I am going to screen share. Hopefully it's right where I want it to be. It is. Okay. Okay, here we are. Okay, so Betelgeuse as a supernova, okay? 
And so uh, Beetlejuice, I just wanted to show you this. Beetlejuice is um, the uh, is a bright red orange star here in the left uh, corner or the left, excuse me, it's the right shoulder of Orion, okay? Uh, so you can see it right here. And they say that it is becoming a supernova. And here is the image of the supernova. Okay. All right. And a supernova, I'm going to explain what a supernova is. All right. So we're going to go back and look at that um, image. All right. So. I'm going to be telling you here what this is about, but first off, so let's talk a little, just a little bit more about Betelgeuse. Okay. So as I said, Betelgeuse is at 29 degrees of Gemini. It's the huge red star in the right shoulder of Orion the Hunter. And I want to give you just a little information too about Orion. Uh, the Orion constellation had many million years of war until they understood that they will keep that they would keep fighting the external battle of projection until they became aware of the reflective nature of the universe. The battle is the inner battle of dark and light within. That is the more important battle. Once they were able to integrate their shadow material as a collective, the whole constellation ascended when they stopped fighting their in what they perceived to be their enemies and realized the true battle was within. And it is also believed that the Star Wars movies were based on the Orion Wars. And Betelgeuse was the base for the resistance to the evil empire in the archetypal war of good and evil. And it was actually the resistance that had to become aware that it was their perception of reality that was creating their reality and that they had to look within to change their situation, that reality is created from the inside out. Bernadette Brady says that Betelgeuse is a star of power and success. It amplifies talents and abilities and asks no price in return. And the stellar nation soul family says the, it is an angel star of cosmic law or cosmic order, bringing things into right alignment with love because love is what is cosmic law. Everything in our universe is made of love. But this is what is called a supernova here. And it's a supernova exploding. And it's, um, uh, astronomers noticed that a dimming was occurring on Betelgeuse several years ago that made astronomers believe that this star was becoming a supernova, that it was ready to explode, although now the dimming is intermittent, so they think it may have, the process may have slowed down a bit, but that it is still going on. But it's kind of, you know, like a light bulb that kind of goes off and on until it's ready to go. And so what is a supernova? A supernova is a powerful and luminous explosion of a star. A supernova occurs during the last evolutionary stages of a massive star or when a white dwarf is triggered into runaway nuclear fusion. The original object, called a progenitor, either collapses to a neutron or black hole or is completely destroyed to form a diffuse nebula. And I have this beautiful quote here, and it says, the spiritual meaning of a supernova, well, actually of a nova, uh, but Betelgeuse is called a supernova because it's so big. Um, the spiritual meaning of a nova is an explosion of divine energy, which completely transforms us. Just as a nova combines both destruction and creation, we too must find equilibrium between letting go of old patterns and embracing new possibilities. A nova symbolizes the awakening of consciousness and the illumination of the soul. It is through the recognition and acceptance of our own inner light that we can fully embody the spiritual meaning of a nova. And this quote was by Dr. Ethan L. Hawke.
And so I feel like this is a big part too of this uh, Capricorn new moon is this integration of this energy from Betelgeuse uh, of the supernova. Okay. All right. So. And in conclusion, it is said that the moon represents that the moon represents the emotional body, which carries all of the memories of the soul encapsulated in emotional form. And at this full moon, we are being asked to allow the, the light into our wounds, the place where we hold old trauma, these old memories, and to remember that we are divine beings. That is the memory we want to have, is to remember that we are divine beings, that we are all fractals of creator, of the source of all creation, and to let the love of the universe into your hearts because love heals everything. It is an explosion of divine energy that completely transforms us. Divine energy is love, and love is the most powerful force in the universe. All right, so wishing you all a wonderful uh, coming month, sending you much love and many blessings. Namaste to all. Blessings. And if you like this video, please check like and subscribe. And if you're interested in a reading, uh, my um, all my information is in the description box below. Aho and blessed be.